TOA community, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Robert Lingle, trainingtheolderadult.com. Wanted to talk to you today about ageism. Is ageism a thing? Is it uh, alive and well in our day and age today? What can we do about it? What should we do about it? I have a couple videos that I would like to show you. Uh, they're commercials. And they're, one's a commercial, one is like a little mini film um, that they made. And uh, I wanted to show you both of them and you tell me, we'll have a little discussion about it. Tell me what you think and um, we can go from there, okay? All right, so here's our first one. Let's get into it. Day -o, day -o. Wake up early, clap on some cologne. I'm 85 and I wanna go home. Working tech support on the next new phone. I'm 85 and I wanna go home. So day, me say day, me say day, me say day. I wanna go home. Day, me say day, me say day, me say day. Oh. I wanna go home. Just got a job as a lifeguard in Savannah. I'm 85 and I wanna go home. I'm dropping six beats, they call me DJ Nana. Okay, so so there's your first one. It's an E-Trade commercial, and they uh, basically highlight different position, different uh, jobs that um, people can do. And because these folks are older, in in one moment I look at that and I'm like, how cool is this? This person's still a stuntman. This person's still being a referee at a high level. Like there's but they're also, most of them, they're blundering and they're messing up. And, you know, the, the lady's a delivery person. She's dropping all the packages. The, the surgeon's coming up and he can barely walk. And, you know, his hands are shaking as he comes up to do the surgery on the, you know, the person's brain or their head. There's, yes, yes, there are like stereotypical things about aging you know, we are all going to have decline in our performance and in our ability and our muscle mass and our bone density and all of that. But I, I do feel like things like this, commercials like this, only feed the stereotype, okay? Now, the next one that I'm going to show you is a way to bust those stereotypes. And I've only watched it once, okay? But I loved it. And I had an immediate response, and I want to see what all of you kind of feel when you see it. But but keep in mind, I don't I don't like these stereotypes. I don't like the stereotypes of it's just because you're old. Okay, I just did a video on that. You're old, just get over it, deal with it. This is how it is. I grew up with a mentality of people around me who suggested that, and that is not accurate. That is not the way it has to be. You are choosing to allow it to be that way. And I can prove it to you. Let's watch. DJ Nana. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Great. Awesome. Just tell us your first name and your age. My real age? <laughs> My name is Paolo, I'm 25 years old. My name is Daniela, and I'm 19. 24. 35. 31. 33. I'm 26 years old. What age do you consider to be old? Late 40s. Maybe 50. <sighs> um. I feel like 30s and new 20s, so I'd say like 40 is old. I'd probably say 50s. I'd like you to show me how an old person would cross the street. person would send a text message. No, notice the flip phone, right? <laughs> it's a flip phone. <laughs> it's like 20 years ago, flip phones. Anyway. How might an old person do a push-up? What about 
jumping jacks. So what they've done is they've fed into a lot of the stereotypes. Old people can't see, they can't think, they're really slow, they have terrible posture, um, they, uh, they can't move or get up and down off the ground without every joint in their body hurting, they can't perform push-ups, they're constantly exhausted and tired, uh, and they're always squinting and having struggles to do any kind of skill. Now again, I'm generalizing, but you just saw like eight to 10 people make a lot of the same assumptions. These are common practices or common stereotypes that are regularly relayed to people, not only in commercials and TV shows, on, on camera, on the news, in social media, in, um, in there, there are many examples. I had, I had too many to actually put in here because I was like, it's gonna get too much with all the videos. We watch a show called The Closer and we have another show um, that we watch, Keegan and I, called Bones, okay? And we basically, there's 12 seasons of one and 10 of the other, and we basically watch one in its entirety, and when it's over, we go watch the other one, and we just watch them back and forth. They're like our two favorite shows. We've probably watched The Closer like five times from beginning to end, where it turns into major crimes, and that goes all the way. And then with Bones, we've probably watched Bones like three times all the way through. Sorry, I'm gonna... Let my dog in here out of the rain. Okay, so all of those shows, when we watch them, it's just episode after episode of just these old people that just can't do anything. You know, even NCIS with Gibbs and his dad, Gibbs is like the most capable old guy, but then every other older person around him who are actually younger than him, they, they have more issues than he does. So he's just Superman, right? Like it's these, it's these stereotypes that feed the stereotype. And so older people just naturally assume that's what I'm supposed to become. I'm supposed to be struggling with my eyesight, wobbling across the street, get off my lawn, right? I mean, you're, it's not everybody's like that. Not everybody has to be like that. Why don't you just think young, okay? Why don't you think capable? Why don't you think if I keep my body strong and capable, I could stay strong and capable? Let's watch how this is then dealt with. Hang on. Hang on, there's someone, there's someone I want you to meet. Hello, I'm Birch, I'm 66. Hi, I'm Daphne, and I'm 68. I'm Dee, and I'm 55. George Fassbinder, 75. Wow. My name is Parvati, I'm 70. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're gonna give you about two minutes to teach each other something that you are good at. I can teach you a jump that I do. Okay, please. Both of your legs go up, mm -hmm. and your arm goes up, and your left arm goes like two uh -huh. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Lift one, two, three. And bring it to your heart. And bring it to your heart. Add the head in. Yeah. When I try to get you balanced, and raise up. Now, bring your legs and your feet up. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, right? Yeah. One, two, three, five, six, seven. So when you come out of a turn, either way, you go back to that basis. Over, now forward. Over, yeah. <laughs> Square like this, and give me a hook. Hook, jab, cross, hook, and then we'll go like this, all right? One, two, three. Now, what age might you consider to be old? Probably 80 or 90. <laughs> he could just do everything that I told him to do. <laughs> An age that I would consider to be old now might be 100. <laughs> do you remember what you said? Yeah, yeah, I said uh, in the 50s I thought that would be old. But when I thought about it, like... <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, can I, can I do it? <laughs> it really changed my thinking of what old is. <laughs> You've taught me something today. Clearly, there's no way she's old, you know? Now I know from today, hey, I don't look at age. <laughs> at my age, I feel like I did when I was in my 20s. Okay. There's so many things that I still want to do. There's so many things that I can do. As long as I'm growing and learning, then age doesn't matter. When people start stopping, 
That's when they start getting old. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thanks, Thank Daphne. You. It was great meeting you. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Is this a new uh, skill? 40 years. <gasps> wow. When people start stopping, that's when they get old. That is the perfect line. I don't know who that guy is, but he nailed it. That's the perfect line. I got really emotional the first time I saw this at the end when the two were holding hands. It, it, that got me. Um, I'm a big softy on the inside. You guys, I cry every single day. I cry about something. I'm a second away from crying right now. I cry about something every single day. I've got no shame in saying it. I actually think it's a really good thing that people do that. I, if you do, I think, I remember listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger give a speech once, and this was a while ago, and he had like his seven rules of success or something like that. And, and it was either Arnold or it was Matthew McConaughey. I can't remember. I can't remember. It, it was, it might have been McConaughey. Anyway, one of them, whatever they said, one of their laws or one of their rules was be moved to the point of tears daily. And, they, and, and when suggesting why, it was to, to keep a side of yourself that is vulnerable, that is available to being vulnerable and allow that emotion to occur, allow that to happen. Not only is there a release of cortisol and whatever else that helps with stress and all that kind of other things, I think it's important to keep a, a connection to part of part of yourself that that feels those things. It can be happy crying, it can be sad crying. In this case, it's happy crying. I'm I love that they were able to connect uh, to the point within minutes right here, within minutes where they're holding hands, and you can see the gal on the left, her whole yo yo hey, I'm talking over here. You can see the girl on the left, right? Is She's having a moment. Look at the, the elation and the happiness on her face. She's just had a moment of change brought to her. Boy, I was wrong, man, right? I was wrong. This person just proved me to, I just learned something from you, she says. And you can see how they kind of connected, you know? I think quite a few of them did. I really liked this. I liked AARP. Congratulations on this. I, that's why I wanted to put the views at 1.7 million views. That was seven years ago. You know, I just, I really like this message and I hope that it gets to more people, young or old. Number one is don't just assume that these numbers that whatever you think, 40 or 50 is old, just because the number is rising, okay? You have two different types of aging. You have biological aging and you have chronological aging. And chronological aging means you're following the number, 10s and then 20s and then 30s and so on. You're in chronological order but you also have biological aging. And just because somebody hits the age of 65, which is a retirement number apparently, or 66, whatever it is now, that they are now everything that you had just recently suggested. They can't see, they can't walk straight, they can't blah, 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 right? But also understand that those that are deconditioned and don't put an effort, that don't try, they could be what all of those stereotypes are. When you start stopping, that's when you start to get old, right? That's when you lose your abilities. So don't stop moving. Don't stop trying. Don't stop improving. All of these people have one thing in common. Did you notice it? They're not overweight. They're not deconditioned. They're not incapable. All of these individuals have taken good care of themselves. All of these individuals continue to exercise. That is very obvious. You wouldn't have a 76-year-old guy able to do a jump like he did and stick the landing and do that over and over again, right? You wouldn't have these ladies being able to do their ballerina moves or their tai chi moves and their boxing strikes and the V up and all those. You wouldn't have all that if they weren't practicing it on a regular basis. They're capable of doing this because they keep doing it from a young age. They don't stop. As soon as you start stopping, you're going to get old. You're going to get old, which by our biological component now looks at this as a massive decrease in muscle mass, in bone density, in ability, okay, in functionality. You become a fall risk. Your mortality rate goes through the roof. And 
in most cases, cognition will mirror and go with that as well. So I want you to keep this in mind when you see some of these stereotypes, some of these ageism components, which, you know, we don't need to stand out on the streets and pick it necessarily and say, like, stop squinting and stop, you know, mocking, shuffling gates. And like, I'm not saying that they're, they're definitely stereotypes for a reason, because a large majority of our population that are older, they do do that. But are they doing that simply because they're old? No, they're doing that because they stopped a long time ago. And that's the result but I don't want you to just accept that as reality. These folks have now shown us that it doesn't have to be that way. Don't stop trying. Don't stop moving. And if you have, start. Start moving. Start trying. Start doing. Get yourself capable and able because it's never too late to improve upon yourself. You can always make yourself better with every passing day. But if you're younger and you start this process, you'll have more deposits in the bank to carry you through as you age. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something from it. Please feel free to subscribe and share. Send this out to your friends, family members, loved ones, etc. And I hope that message uh, can carry with you a little bit. Can do as long as I'm growing and learning then age doesn't matter. When people start stopping, that's when they start getting old. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. When people start stopping, that's when they get old. And learning, then age doesn't matter. When people start stopping, that's when they start getting old. Thank you. Man, I love it. I'm putting that on a t-shirt. All right, everybody, until next time, continue to fight your good fight against circopenia. Love you all. Take care.